Hi, this is Matthew from Instructional Technology, and I am recording outside today, so you will hear the kids next door in the pool and the lawnmower, but I assure you it is still quieter than inside my house. So today, we're here to look at Snip and Sketch. It is not a new tool, but it's one that a lot of people are just starting to discover, so I figured it was time to cover it. So if you are on a Windows 10 device, and that's where you'll find Snip and Sketch, you can click under Type Here to Search and just type in Snip, and you'll see the snipping tool, but you'll also see snip and sketch. Snip and sketch allows you to snip and then annotate, as well as a few other options. So before we get into what the full interface looks like, we just pause right here. Uh, I can open it here. I can also just right from here, take a new snip, and by a new snip, that means click and drag. And at this point, I can now annotate it. Now, before we do that, I'm gonna show you the other options. Uh, you do have the ability to wait three seconds before you snip or wait 10 seconds. And what these are for is sometimes if I'm trying to get an image of a drop down menu, if I open that menu like this, sometimes that stays open when I hit Windows Shift S, which is another way to do the snip. And sometimes it doesn't stay open. So by choosing to do a new snip in three seconds, it gives me the ability to open that up. Apparently, I needed 10 seconds for that one. Uh, so let's try that again. I'm going to give myself 10 seconds this time to open this menu. Now, this is one that would have actually stayed open, but, but there are some drop-down menus that won't stay open once you hit that Windows button. So now this allows me to take the picture of what I want to take the picture of. All right, so I've mentioned Windows Shift S a couple of times. That's the way that I have been using this tool for years. So I'll press the Windows, Shift, and S button, and you get just this little toolbar up here. So this one takes the picture exactly like I just did. It is a rectangular area of the screen. Next one over is more freeform. So I can actually draw out an area that I want to include, as weird as you want. And the next one over, these two can be confusing. Uh, this one is a window snip. This one is full screen. The difference here is uh, normally I have a second monitor that I'm using as well. So if I took the full screen snip, it would take an image of both monitors. Window allows me to choose this monitor or my other monitor. Okay, so window is a single window and the full screen allows you to take a picture of more than one screen at once. All right, so once you have that image taken, now you have lots of things you can do with it. So right here, there's touch writing. So if I was on a desktop computer that didn't have touch screen, then I could choose a pen and use my mouse for this. Uh, or if I have touch screen but not a stylus, then I can use this to write on the screen with my finger. If I turn that off, now I'm on a Surface Pro that does have a stylus. So this is what my finger does nothing. And this is what my stylus does. Okay, so with my finger, uh, if this wasn't locked in place, I could slide it around. So finger lets you move while the stylus does the drawing. But if I turn on draw with touch, then my finger does the same thing as a stylus. I can come over to the eraser and the drop down there lets me erase all ink. Or I can actually use an eraser manually. All right, so I also just opened the ruler. The ruler, if you touch it with one finger, you can move it around. But if you touch it with two fingers, you can rotate. And of course, it shows you what angle that is. So I can then grab my pen and draw a straight line. There's also a protractor. And there is the cropping tool. Often when I am trying to get a screenshot of something, I will take a slightly larger screenshot because I just find that I can't be quite as precise when I'm actually taking the picture as I can be after the fact with the cropping tool. I can just be a little more precise here. So I do use the cropping tool pretty often. And when you're done, you can just click OK, but you can also zoom in if you need to be even more precise. Really handy. Back to regular size, and there we go. So what this enables me to do is, again, I do a lot of tutorials, do a lot of screenshots. So I can actually take a screenshot of something, grab my highlighter, and highlight here, 
And I can add this as an attachment to an email so I can show someone exactly where they need to click. So I don't know if you caught that, but the difference between the pencil and the highlighter is you cannot see through the pencil, but you can see through the highlighter. Now both of these, and the pencil as well, have 24 different size settings. That's true for each of these, as well as there's 30 different colors to choose from. I want you to see this is one stroke, two strokes, three, four. The pencil does shading really well and even can differentiate between this is at an angle and this is pointing straight at, with more pressure. So it's pressure sensitive and also will get darker as you color over it. Once again, I'm going to erase everything. You can see you can crop, you've got the ruler, you've got different uh, colors of ink and different types of ink, see-through or not, shaded or not, to annotate with. And then you have a couple different options what to do with this. I can now copy this and paste it, as I said earlier, into an email, or I can save it directly as a picture. You can see this is a PNG. I can also choose JPEG, or if I want to capture some motion, I could do a GIF or GIF, however you like to pronounce that. My workflow used to be I would copy, paste into Word, and then right-click on Word, because in Word, if you right-click on an image, you can save it as a picture. Uh, this makes it way simpler. I can go right to saving it as a picture. So like I said, this has been around for a little while. Uh, I wrote a book last year on Microsoft Tools. has over 100 color images, and absolutely every single one of the images inside the book were taken with Snip and Sketch and cropped and annotated in here as well. Other options are you do have the ability to share. So once you have this image, I mentioned that I copy these into email sometimes. Several other ways that you can share on here as well. And you can actually click to open a file and grab an existing picture. So here's images for my book. And you can annotate one of these images as well and then save that. So you can take existing images, annotate them, and save them again, either to the same location or to a new location. So this is all under Snip and Sketch, so uh, several different ways to get there. You can search for it. A lot of times when you have more options in, in under ellipses or a drop-down menu, they're really cool. In this case, not so much. Uh, share is not what you think it is. That's actually sharing the app with somebody. You can uh, go in and give feedback to Microsoft with the rate and review. App settings, there really isn't much there. Now, pin to start and pin to taskbar are things that I like to point out with other apps as well. Pin to start would mean that you would place it in here. So it would be one of the icons that appears as soon as you click on the Windows button. Pin to taskbar means what I have down at the bottom of the screen. So I have, I'm using Screencast-O-Matic right now, and then I have a couple different logins to Microsoft Edge down there and Outlook. So the ones that aren't underlined are ones that are permanently down there. So you see Teams and my Windows Explorer folder are not underlined. That means they're always available there. Some of the other ones that are underlined are also always available there, but underlined means that I have it open right now. So you can add it to be more convenient, but because you already have the ability to just press Windows Shift S, I don't really feel a need to add a shortcut to this anywhere else. And besides that, I'm using the Surface Pro. So I already have this little pen icon down in the bottom right corner. It says Windows Ink Workspace when I hover over it. I click on that. There's full screen clip. So two touches, and I've got a full screen clip. And if I really only wanted a piece of that, it's really quick to get in here, crop it down to what I really wanted. There's my toolbar. So if you're on a Windows device that has digital inking, you don't even need Windows Shift S. You can just click on the Windows Ink Workspace and full screen snip. Okay, so that is snip and sketch. Comes in really handy whenever you are on a Windows 10 device. So I tend to use it, like I said, for writing tutorials for how to do things, but this works with anything on the web, anything that's on your screen at all whatsoever. Have a digital textbook up there, have your own pictures from home up there. If it appears on your screen, you can use snip and sketch to grab that image and put it in other places, put it into PowerPoints, put it into Google Slides, put it into Smart Notebook, anywhere that you can place images, Snip and Sketch helps you do that. As a reminder, you can copy and paste, 
or when you click the Save button, you can choose where you want to save that to. If you have synced your drive to your device, whether that's Google Drive or OneDrive, you can save directly there as well. So I have my OneDrive here, so I can save any of those images to anywhere on my OneDrive, and that way I have access to them on any other device as well. And you can do the exact same thing with your Google Drive. Okay, so again, this is Matthew from Office of Instructional Technology. If you have any questions about the SNP and Sketch or anything else instructional technology-wise, you can email me at this address right here. That's mnickerson at aacps.org.